In the QFT ELISA, the working strength conjugate is the first reagent added. Add 50 microliters of freshly prepared working strength conjugate to the strips being used. After centrifugation, avoid pipetting up and down or mixing plasma by any means prior to harvesting. At all times, take care not to disturb material on the surface of the gel. Plasma samples should only be harvested using a pipette. Plasma samples can be loaded directly from centrifuge blood collection tubes into the QFT ELISA plate including when automated ELISA workstations are used. Add 50 microliters of each plasma sample to the appropriate ELISA plate wells. You can refer to your region-specific package insert for a recommended sample layout. Finally, add 50 microliters of each standard S1 to S8 when using the 8-point curve, or S1 to S4 when using the 4-point curve, to the relevant ELISA plate wells, keeping in mind that each standard must be run at least in duplicate. Replace the ELISA plate lid and mix thoroughly on the microplate shaker for one minute, ensuring that the samples do not spill. Incubate at room temperature for two hours. The plate should not be exposed to direct sunlight during incubation. Thorough washing is critical to proper ELISA performance. Washing can be performed either manually or by using an automated washer. After the incubation, wash the plate with 400 microliters working strength wash buffer for at least six cycles. During each wash cycle, every well should be completely filled with wash buffer, showing a positive meniscus. A soak period of 5 seconds between cycles is recommended. After washing, remove residual wash buffer by tapping the plate on an absorbent wipe. Pour enzyme substrate solution in a clean reagent reservoir. Add 100 microliters of enzyme substrate solution to each well. Replace the ELISA plate lid and mix the plate thoroughly on a microplate shaker for one minute, ensuring the samples do not spill. Incubate the plate at room temperature for 30 minutes. The plate should not be exposed to direct sunlight during this incubation. After the 30-minute substrate incubation, add 50 microliters of enzyme-stopping solution to each well. Using the microplate shaker, mix the plate before reading. Return all unused reagents to the refrigerator for future use. Using the microplate reader, read the plate within 5 minutes after adding the enzyme-stopping solution. 
The reader should be fitted with a 450 nanometer filter and a reference filter of between 620 and 650 nanometers. Data is generated in optical density values or ODs and is ready to be exported to data analysis software. The QFT analysis software provided by Celestis is one of several data analysis tools that can be used to analyze data. A copy of the latest QFT software can be obtained from the Celestis website at www.celestis.com under Quantiferon TB Gold Intube Technical Information. For step-by-step -step instructions, please refer to the QFT Analysis Software Instructional Guide available on the website. The main screen shows four tabs that sequentially guide the user through the calculations. These are Run Details, Raw Data, Standards Results and Subject Results. To begin analysing results, complete information in the Run Details tab. Under the Raw Data tab, raw data can be entered using either the Paste Raw Data or Manual Data Entry function. To use the Paste Raw Data function, the OD values generated from your plate reader should be in an 8x12 grid layout. These can be in a tab delimited text, CSV or Excel format. To type your OD values in manually, use the Manual Data Entry button. Data from plates with less than 12 strips can be analysed. However, each strip must contain 8 values, even if they are blank values. Empty cells will be denoted NS for no sample. If a cell contains text such as stars or out, indicating that the OD value is off-scale, the sample is given a final calculated value of greater than 10 international units per milliliter. Before data can be analysed, formatting needs to be applied to nominate which cells are samples and which are standards. Formatting can be done either by default or manual method. The default format is used when the samples and standards are configured as per the recommended Celestis layout. Please refer to your package insert. The Manual Format button opens the Manual Formatting toolbar. This allows you to manually assign both standards and subject samples. To assign standards S1, S2, S3, etc., select the Standards Radio button, followed by the Radio button for your standards orientation. Click on the cell that contains data for S1. The other standards will be appropriately positioned in order. To assign subject samples, select the Subject Samples Radio button. Select the appropriate sample type and sample orientation. Click on the cell that contains the subject's nil data. The chosen cell will be designated as nil and the other samples will be positioned in order. Once the standards and subject samples have been applied, save by pressing the Complete button. The subject IDs can be added or changed by selecting the View Names button. If all subject IDs are to begin with an identical prefix, these characters can be entered into the prefix window. In the Subject ID window, double-click on the coloured block for each subject and type or scan the new information in the pop-up box. The remainder of the subject's IDs can be added manually by double-clicking or pressing Enter for each subject. Once the correct format has been applied and all subject IDs entered, the next step is to select the Calculate button. In order for the Calculate button to be enabled, at least two blocks of standards and one subject block must be assigned.
the standard curve for the assay will be automatically analysed and the standards results tab screen will be displayed. The software performs a quality control assessment of the assay, generates a standard curve and provides a test result for each subject as detailed in the interpretation of results section of the package insert. The Standards Results tab displays the standard curve and provides information directly related to the acceptance criteria of the ELISA. The results of the Quality Control Acceptance Criteria are shown as Pass or Fail. A statement indicating whether the ELISA test run is valid or invalid is shown at the bottom of the screen. If any of the quality control criteria are not met, the ELISA test is invalid and must be repeated. Results for samples can be viewed under the Subject Results tab. The standard curve is used to calculate a value in international units per milliliter of interferon gamma for each subject's nil, TB antigen and mitogen samples. Based on these values, the result for each subject is then reported as positive, negative or indeterminate. All concentrations greater than 10 international units per milliliter are reported as greater than 10, as such values fall beyond the validated linear range of the ELISA. Upon opening the QFT analysis software for the first time, a folder called My Documents slash Quantiferon is created. By default, all files are saved to subfolders within this folder. Select the Save File button to save a copy of the results to file. This can be reloaded for further analysis. To print results, select the Print button. This will display a printing screen that is divided into two sections. The upper section displays the various print options. The lower section displays the ELISA details and results as they will appear on the final printout. Celestis, changing the way the world looks at TB.